and this is the second video on my tablet thread for my 2012 Honda Accord in this video I'm going to cover the software that I'm using to accomplish this in order to turn the tablet on with the way it's set up I only have to turn the key to the accessory slot and the tablet will start you see the screen went black that's because I'm using stick mount now to mount the USB I'll talk about that here in a second uh, the first thing I'll cover is the ROM that I'm running I am running Android 4.4.4 KitKat and I am running AutoDroid 1.2 that is the last release that Mitchell put out for AutoDroid uh, the kernel that I'm using is the Kangaroo kernel you could use the Oxido kernel for this as well I did play around with Android 5.0 Lollipop a little bit I was actually using 5.0.2 and that everything functions for this setup on Android 4.0.2 the only exception is the tablet itself will not charge it will operate in host mode and recognize the, the digital audio converter and the USB stick using stick mount but what it will not do is charge with the way it's set up on my uh, dash right now it actually charges because of the kernel modification that I'm running with kangaroo kernel that enables fast charging or and charging at all in host mode I started using stick mount uh, which just mounts the USB stick off of my USB hub it's available in the Play Store uh, I have the, the pro version it just the only real difference it mounts the USB stick in the same location every time and you help support the developer for that application uh, previously I've had trouble with it mounting consistently mounting the USB flash drive sometimes it doesn't always do that with stick mount I haven't had an issue it always mounts the USB stick see the audio application that I'm using is power amp and one of the reasons I'm using power amp is because it can play flac files and if you watch my previous my other video for the hardware 3 you'll notice I'm using the file e10k USB deck and the power amp application can play audio files that are output at 96 kilohertz 24 bit audio rate which is the maximum for Android 5.0 uh, unfortunately I'm on KitKat so it's still 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bit output but eventually when we get a kernel and can run lollipop with these setups then uh, well, I'll be able to hit the maximum audio quality using with the DAC that I'm using and 96 kilohertz 24 bit is about DVD quality audio uh, let's see and I'm also using Tasker for a few functions I have Tasker configured to keep the screen on. I noticed I was having a little trouble with the display timing out. So Tasker with the System Plus options is keeping the screen on while it's charging. Okay, so first I will go over to Torque. I'll launch Torque and you can see it's going to connect to the car here. And I haven't configured anything in Torque yet, so there's no uh, real data configured now. I've got I can get the real-time information from the car sensors You can see it's connected and I can I can actually I actually need to change some of these gauges around a little bit This is the way it comes um, When you initially install it But torque is working I can pull my check engine codes from here as well and that is possible with the scan tool MX that I have plugged in All right, for music, using the power app, let's see, play some music here. changing some of the shuffle options here all right so you can see it's actually playing through the factory head unit I can adjust the volume on the steering wheel turn it down turn it up that's because of the way it's routed I'm on the auxiliary input uh, one of the other things about this setup is that the uh, 
my factory Bluetooth is still functioning. You can see the Bluetooth icon here. It shows that my phone is actually connected to the Bluetooth hands-free on my car. And I'm using Tasker on my phone, so there's a profile there that's set up so when it connects to the Bluetooth hands-free in my car, my cell phone turns on uh, wi -Fi, the Wi-Fi tethering hotspot, which my tablet connects to. And it looks like this time my tablet didn't come out of airplane mode, so for whatever reason I'm going to manually take it out of airplane mode. That's the thing with these, sometimes you hit a little bug here and there, and you can see it just connected to my cell phone's hotspot. Uh, and then the other feature, I set up two profiles on my phone, so the second one actually turns off the hotspot when it disconnects from this Bluetooth. So that automatically, I don't have to touch anything on my cell phone and my tablet connects to it and has an internet connection and then also my cell phone will turn the hotspot on and off automatically based on that Bluetooth connection. And we can see I can still place a call using my hands free. Call 951 9514236 Press the talk button and continue to add numbers or say call or dial to place a call. I just cancel all that and you can see it's uh, still playing music and I can actually call myself interesting enough using Google Hangouts and so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a ring Hello? What name or number would you like to call? Oh, well, it doesn't look like that actually worked. I did do it earlier. Let's see what was happening with my phone here. So, oh, there's the call. It was just delayed quite a bit quite a bit of delay, but it did eventually go through. As right, so we see the hands-free works, I can place calls from the tablet using Google Hangouts, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm really doing with it at this point. My light sensor is no longer buried in the dash so I can use it and my camera is available as well so if I wanted to later on I could set up gestures and probably uh, set up all kinds of things and just wave my hand and get the tablet to do features using that camera. So I'm definitely a lot more pleased with this setup. One of the big benefits I didn't mention earlier is that this setup will be upgradable because the tablet is easily removed. I did this previously in my Acura TL and that setup was not upgradable because I was limited. I had size constraints based on uh, what size tablet would fit into the console and then I also had constraints as far as uh, where the connector was and everything. Uh, with this setup I have this very large space here. I could even fit the Nexus 9 there provided I get a lollipop kernel on the Nexus 9 that will allow me to charge the uh, tablet while it's in USB host mode. That's really the only limiting factor at this point. There's really no need for uh, Power Event Manager. You can do everything Power Event Manager does from Tasker with a rooted tablet. And that's all I have for this video. Check out the thread on Drive Accord for more information, some block diagrams, and a lot of pictures of how to do this yourself. You could do this to your car.
Turn left onto Mission Gorge Road.